Shalom everyone and today we're going to start some some secrets about the month of Kislev which is known as Sagittarius uh, that is uh, starting right now in Jerusalem time and Kislev is the uh, third month from the uh, Jewish New Year although it is the ninth month in the astrological uh, biblical year remember we have two counts one is the count from the spring that's a uh, Nissan uh, many 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 uh, zodiac uh, calculations start with from the Sun in many cultures okay but this is when we starting from Nissan as a first astrological month just we have to remember that this is coming from the point of view of the light according to the Kabbalistic calculation why because Nisan is Chodesh Aviv uh, Aviv is Aleph Bet Alpha, when you have the alphabet alphabetical order from A to Z or from Aleph to Taf this is the direction from above to below now when we coming to this the fall uh, starting then we starting with uh, Libra with Tishrei Tishrei is Tav Shin Reish this is from the end to the beginning which means from the vessel upwards from below to above now so when we count the cycles connecting to from the light point of view we starting from Nissan when we uh, we counting it from the vessels point of view then we starting with uh, from uh, Tishrei so that's why we have two kind of new years one is Rosh Lachodashim the head of the month Nissan and one is Rosh Hashanah the head of the year so of course uh, we so that's why if you look at the celebration of the month of Nisan, especially uh, Passover, we're celebrating the receiving of the miracle that we received from the Creator that basically the change that, you know, Exodus was a revolution in the history of humanity. But that revolution came from above it was not initiated from the people point of view it was in it came from above we're talking about a whole nation of slaves in which Moses is being sent to them and they are just a very passive through the whole journey through, from the moment Moses is coming to Egypt till the Israelites leaving Egypt that the, the the people are passive over there the light is coming from above that's Aviv Aleph Bet from above to below when we are talking about the month of Tishrei and the month of Tishrei is the month that we people we need to create the connection to the light of the Creator we need to do the cleansing we need to do the repentance we need to do uh, to take the commitment of transforming ourselves so this is why it's Tishrei Tav Shin Reish from the bottom up which means uh, when we are talking about redemption we're talking about two different kinds of redemptions one is the redemption that is generated by the intervene, intervening of the Creator with His great light which basically pushes humanity forwards to the next level and when we're talking about the other kind of redemption this is coming from below to above it's when people when we humanity when we initiate the redemption by our uh, by our desire by our transformation by our commitment and that's why again it is the month of Tishrei Tav Shin Reish from the bottom up so when we read the Zohar and the Zohar is explaining about Tishrei and the Zohar is using the verse Tnu Oz Le'elokim 
give vigor and power to God. He says, you know, do we need to give God power? Of course not. But in this physical reality, the presence of God depends on our awakening, on our uh, choice, free will. This is, we are the ones, that's why we people, we are, our level is called Malchut. Malchut means government, means uh, uh, control. And who is in control in our reality? Us. We are in control, not God. If God was in control, everything would be perfect immediately, just right now, without any hesitation, without any wait. Because the giving of the Creator is infinite. Where comes the problem? The problem comes from us blocking the light of the Creator from flowing into our lives. And that's why this level is called Malchut. You, you know what they say, the customer is always the king. Kingdom, Malchut means literally in Hebrew kingdom, which means who is in control, who is the king and the queen in this physical realm? We are. Because the same way the consumer cannot be forced to consume electricity, we, people, the vessel, the consumer, we cannot be forced to receive God's light we need to awaken from below to above so that light will be uh, revealed uh, in us. That cycle, starting from below, is starting from the month of Tishrei. So, therefore, when we come to learn about the month of Kislev, it is the third month from Tishrei, the third month of the fall. So it has that aspect of awakening from below and we see the connection. Okay. So, uh, the month of Kislev, we will start over here for a very dominant force in this month. And the month of Kislev is uh, the many ways to approach the, f the understanding of the frequencies of the month in the Hebrew calendar, okay? The month of Kislev is the way we look at it. We will start today, not as usual. We will start from a, the letters of the month. What does it mean, the letters of the month? According to the Book of Formation, Sefer Yetzirah, which is the most ancient book in uh, Kabbalah, basically in Judaism, because this book is related to Abram, the patriarch, and it is a book of cosmology. It explains how the universe was created and how it is structured. It doesn't go to the details openly it, because it, it, it's written as a riddle. It takes a lot of, lot of knowledge in Kabbalah in order to understand the riddle and the mathematical uh, formulas that Sefer Yitzirah is presenting to us. However, in Sefer Yitzirah it is explained that the universe is uh, built of 22 basic building blocks. These 22 building blocks, they are, ma they are, they are made of 10 uh, Sefirot and 12 uh, and 12, that, and 12 more forces that have many, many manifestations. One of them is the 12 signs of the zodiac. Another one we discovered lately, just a few de decades ago, where when we are talking about what's the basic number, when we're coming to talk about physics, the physics of matter. Every, every, part of matter, every manifestation of that realm that is called matter has to be built from 12 basic particles, six quarks and six leptons. Each six is divided into upper three and lower three. By the way, Abraham Sefer Yetzirah 
he's speaking again the same thing but that book was written about was uh, composed about 4,000 years ago that we have 12 basic frequencies forces and by the way nobody looks at these original particles as little little tiny dust like uh, particles it's all waves it's frequencies it's not dust like little 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 small grain no it's not it's fr a frequency it is a uh, it is more like less than a grain and more like um, like a string a string of a violin a string of a cello a string which means it is a generator of a frequency a very special frequency so there are 12 of them that are divided into two six and each six is divided of upper three and lower three okay same partition same structure in the book of formation we have also in addition to that 10 dimensions okay so and the combination of the 10 dimensions and the 12 particles that what gives the matrix of reality according to abram same story 10 not 9 10 not even 11 that's how it says in the book of formation and whoever knows the history and the development of the super strings theory <laughs> there was always an argument if it's 10 or 9 10 or 11 abram 4000 years ago tells us really clearly 10 not 9 10 not 11 so if we take the 12 22 10 plus 12 original building blocks of the whole matrix of reality everything in reality is a composition of these 22 original uh, frequencies now uh, now in every creation in every aspect of reality you have all particles but there's one that is more dominant for instance when we are talking about 12 months of the year 12 signs of the zodiac we're talking about in the dimension of time the time is divided into years the years are divided into four seasons every season is divided into three months and again gives you six fe six female months and six male months six positive six negative not negative in a in a you know bad way but you know the same way you have electricity plus and minus okay and so when we are talking about every month every month has a letter a Hebrew letter that is the sequence that is made of this Hebrew letter at first it's not just a letter that the sequence of this letter is the first one is the base is the uh, the code of that frequency that we experience in our physical senses as a frame of time that is called a month so there is a frequency to every month there's a feel there's a vibration there is something in the air it's like you know same way you when you sail in the ocean uh, you need to uh, if you're the captain you need to read the weather forecast because you have to understand what is the weather in the area that you are sailing or you're approaching otherwise you kind of uh, you're missing a very important point same thing for us the Hebrew months are just describing the frequency in our in our environment during every one of the months because each month is giving us another challenge through which we can uh, go through in order to make a successful journey towards completion of our souls now the letter that is the dominant letter in the month of Sagittarius is the Hebrew letter Samich. Okay, you see this letter uh, in, the, in the middle in white uh, on the right, Samich. The one who looks like uh, it's not a complete circle of, 
okay? But that's a letter Samech. But every month is influenced not just by the sign, the zodiac sign, but there's also the influencing um, planet. And the planet we are dealing with is the planet of Jupiter, in Hebrew, Tzedek. And planet Jupiter is basically ruled by the letter sequence that starts with the Hebrew letter Gimel. So now you got the letter Gimel and the letter Samech. And together, Samech Gimel, you know, if you read Hebrew, if you're a Hebrew speaker, you look at the letter at the word at the letter Samech and Gimel, the way you see in front of you, and you don't need to see the numbers, but you already know this is the number 63. In Hebrew, you use the letters also as numbers. So many times you don't use uh, like the modern numbers, but you use the Hebrew letters for numbers. And in many, especially when it comes to the frame of time, when you want to uh, say, uh, let's say the year. So yeah, this year is 5784. Uh, whoever speaks flu he flu uh, fluent Hebrew will never say 8784. Uh, he will say Tafshin uh, Pei which is the Hebrew letters that give you the number 5784. Okay? So that's uh, so either you say Tafshin Pei Dalit or Tashpad, uh, but, and you write it that. The moment if you write it in, in like, you know, what we know as numbers. 5784, you're not an Israeli. <laughs> and you're not a, a natural Hebrew speaker. You know, you never write the number of the year in, uh, in numbers, only in Hebrew letters. So when you come to the, so there's many other issues that you use the letters. In this case, we come to the letters Samech Gimel, which is the number 63. And the number 63 is a very significant number in Kabbalistic study because it refers to a very, very uh, powerful, important, dominant force in human life. And this force is called Sefirat Bina, Sefirat, the illumination, the frame, the dimension that is called Bina. It's also called, connected to Olam Beria. Olam means in Hebrew, concealment and but in a simple Hebrew it means a world what is the world the world we live in is we live in a world that basically conceals the physicality our senses our reality our perception of reality is very concealed well we, we you just study Kabbalah you know you cannot see particles you can't see uh, electromagnetic waves all of our real, or most of our reality is made of these particles and waves. We have, we cannot see that. Okay, so we live in concealment, which means we think we see. We're totally blind. Okay, so when we are talking about the number sixty-three, or the way it's represented as the Hebrew letter Samach Gimel, we know we are referring to the Sfirat Bina. How did we come to that number? Uh, the Tetragrammaton, which again, it's simply in Hebrew, this is the name of God. The name of God that cannot be pronounced. Why it cannot be pronounced? Because it doesn't belong to our physical dimension. You can meditate on it, you can contemplate on it, you cannot pronounce it. It belongs just to the realm of imagination and thinking, not talking and not visualizing. It's, it's, not, it's not tangible. It's not in the physical domain. When you spell it out, the four letters, by the names of these letters, Yud, He, and Vav, and the letter He, you get uh, the name that you see in front of you, which when you meditate, it's very important in certain meditations. However, it is an, also a number. Every Hebrew let, letter is a number, so every word is a number, every name is a number, every, everything is numbers. The whole Tanakh is numbers. So uh, the world was created by numbers. Every uh, 
physicists will tell you that. If you take the number of the, the way you write this name, which is connected to Sefirat Bina, or Lambria, the number will be 63. Which means the number 63 is basically representing the frequency of the Sefirah of Bina, which is on one hand the lowest Sefirah of the upper three, which means when we are talking about 10 Sefirot, you see it on the right, you see the 10 Sefirot tree of life order. So the upper three Sefirot, which are basically the Godhead, they are the, the most, um, most remote and high Sefirot in the tree of life which means they are really beyond our imagination or our thinking. However, they represent the highest force of light when it, the, loud, the light is funneling from the upper sefira to the bottom one, till Malchut, from 10 to 1. Then on the three top sefirot, Keter, Chochmah, and Bina, this is where it's the light, where the light is so powerful, it either gives you life or it can kill you because the intensity is very, very, very high. The bottom of the upper three sefirot is Bina. And since Bina is a sefirah that below it, you have the seven sefirot that represent physical reality, seven days a week, seven oceans, seven continents. There's so many seven um, electromagnetic belts around planet Earth, what are called as the, uh, what's known as the Van Allen belts. Okay, you have the number seven in many, many, many uh, aspects of our physical reality. Bina is above it. Bina is basically the interface that feeds physical existence. Which means the moment we speak about that the letters of the month of Sagittarius are Samech Gimel, whoever studies Kabbalah knows that that means a direct access to the life force of everything, which means either health, uh, sustenance, everything that is about what feeds our lives in this physical mundane reality, which means that the month of Sagittarius is imbued with a lot of forces that can fulfill us, sustain us, heal us, elevate us, complete us. It's a month full of bliss and light. That's a first understanding when we're talking about it. Okay? When we have uh, one of the songs of Hanukkah, and by the way, Hanukkah is a holiday of eight days. Why eight? Bina is the eighth Sefirah, which means we, it's not a coincidence that Hanukkah is in the eighth uh, in the is in in the in the month of the Kislev, Sagittarius. Also, the name Hanukkah. If you uh, if you take the name Hanukkah and you reorganize the letters, you get Chana Kavav. Chana is sixty-three. You know Chana, the name Chana, is a symbol, and that's why there's one of the famous legends of Chana is about a mother and seven sons that were executed by the Greek king uh, of uh, Damascus that because they, they insisted of staying Jewish. So the king executed them one by one. The mother was watching how seven, of, uh, seven sons were executed and she was executed last. Okay, so, and that happened some 2200 years ago. So again, Chana and seven sons, it's Bina and the seven Sefirot that Chana is, feed, is feeding. 
Okay. By the way, one of the things to look at Bina is as a is the uh, is the mother uh, because it feeds reality. So you have that Bina and seven sons. That aspect will repeat itself. So you have Han, the word in the word Hanukkah. You have Chana and Kavav. Kavav is twenty six. Okay, that Bina is feeding. Uh, through the letters of God is feeding reality. One of the, the most famous songs of Hanukkah uh, has the line Bnei Bina Yemei Shmona, the children of Bina, the days of eight. It rhymes in Hebrew, not in English. So uh, that's a Maus Tzu on uh, the fifth, uh, the fifth house. So what we are talking about is we have. The number 63 or Sag Samach Gimel as like connecting to the uh, powerhouse, to connecting to the source of life, to the source of living, which means this is a month that is full of bliss uh, of all kinds. Now, it's also being mentioned in other places that. Uh, when we look in the uh, in the book of Genesis, Genesis 9:13, it says over there at Kashti Natati Be'anan Ve'ayta Leot Brit Be'niu Ve'Naaretz. One of the major symbols of the flood, Noah's flood, is that after the flood, a rainbow appeared in the cloud, and God says to Noah. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Which means the rainbow is the sign of the covenant. Okay? Rainbow in Hebrew is Keshet. Keshet, Sagittarius. So the Hebrew word for Sagittarius is Keshet, which means a rainbow. Okay, just if you we think about it, that the flood started on the month of Cheshvan. Cheshvan is Scorpio, and the flood lasted for forty. Day, and the rain came for forty days, so that that was completed in Kislev in Sagittarius. Also, the water dried up. A year later in Sagittarius. So the rainbow came up in the clouds in the month of Sagittarius and the name for Sagittarius is after the rainbow. What about the bow? The archer's bow. Uh, we'll come to it. That's also right. But first of all, we're talking about the rainbow. So what is the rainbow? What is the rainbow about? So the Zohar is teaching us that whenever uh, or let's say before that, why did the flood flood the earth and destroyed almost all of humanity except from Noah and his children? And the answer is that because of the bad deeds of the people of that generation that blocked the flow of light from above, and the result was because of their atrocities all the negative actions they did created a climate change and the earth could not bear that negativity anymore and the flood simply washed away all traces of corruption that humanity created now the rainbow came as a symbol for the covenant now what is a covenant covenant is on one hand a commitment a covenant is also a connection a very strong connection when two people are having a covenant it means they're very strongly connected by emotions interest any kind of feel of uh, of connection any kind of feel of commitment so there's no covenant without commitment without a very strong connection so we understand from the Zohar that every time that humanity, through its corruption, 
blocks the flow of life to earth, the rainbow will appear in order to re-inject life to earth so the earth would not fall apart and collapse again. So what are we talking about as we just mentioned this idea? It means that the word coven, that the word keshet, Sagittarius in biblical Hebrew, is a covenant. But it, it's not a covenant, just it's not a pact written. We're talking about the rainbow, which is basically an injection of spiritual light of life to humanity when humanity seems to be falling apart. So again, we go back to Bina, which, as we said, this, this level, this frequency Bina, is what feeds uh, our reality. So now we understand that the word rainbow and or Keshet is about Bina, it's about feeding. And again, covenant is about also feeding because it's about a connection, which means like the connection between, let's say there's a power station and there's a customer, and, and the customer is connected to the power station. He basically is a customer. He signed a contract in which this network is supplying him electricity. So when we're talking about the covenant, we're talking about a flow of light, of energy, of anything, in which both sides are committed to keep that going. Now, the Zohar connects another thing. When it says that God says, I have set my rainbow in the cloud, and it says, I have set, which means the Zohar, the Zohar is teaching us, the Zohar, Parashat Noach, verse 261, when it says, I have set my rainbow, natati in Hebrew, which means I gave, that that was given earlier. Which means, ki keshet, because keshet, Sagittarius in Hebrew, he sowed even shtia. Keshet is the secret of the foundation stone, or it can be read also as the drinking stone. What's the foundation stone? What's the drinking stone? And the foundation stone, and the foundation stone has been created even before the world was created. Because the whole world, the whole world is founded upon that stone. So just a second, is it a foundation stone or is it a drinking stone? The word shtia is right for both of them, foundation and drinking. And the answer is both are right. Both are right because the same way the rainbow is a symbol showing right now humanity is kind of shaky and can expire any minute in order to stop another another uh, flood the creator will sustain humanity with more light of holiness and the symbol for that is the rainbow in the cloud so the rainbow is basically the connection between the upper world where all the bliss is coming from to our physical mundane limited world so that's basically what covenant is about it's a connection it's a communication it's a unity okay so when we're talking about the foundation stone it has the same meaning the foundation stone is according to the legend the place in which the heaven kisses the earth this is the place if you study kabbalah this is the place, the line of light that evolves from the endless. That line, when it evolves down to the physical reality, it touches the earth in one place. In Jerusalem, 
in what is called the Temple Mount, in that place where the foundation stone is standing, it's not just a foundation stone, it is the drinking stone. This is the place, the upper world, is connected to the physical world, and that's how the upper world is feeding humanity, the whole of humanity, the whole planet, through that place, the foundation stone. So, and the foundation stone has been established, that frequency, even before the world we know it was created because it is the foundation stone. There must be a certain, a certain uh, uh, connection between the upper world and the lower world. And if you just think about it, uh, if we're talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for them, the place the world kisses the upper world was in Jerusalem. That's why the binding of Isaac was on the foundation stone. That's why Jacob's dream was over the foundation stone. We are talking about a very crucial point, a junction between the upper and the physical world. Later on, when we're talking about a, you know, coming to the first kingdom of Israel, uh, when it comes to King David, King David establishes his temple or establish the foundations for the temple, his son, King Solomon, is building the first temple where? Around the foundation stone. The Holy of Holies was built upon the foundation stone. Okay? Now, if we're talking about other monotheist religions, they are also, if you go and research, their belief systems, they're also speaking about Jerusalem as the place, the heavens, that is not physically perceived by us, the heavens and the earth kiss, connect to each other. This is where the earth is being fed from. Okay? So that's exactly what we're talking about. So that can be symbolized by the rainbow. And it can be also symbolized by the bow. We go to Genesis 49:24. But his bow remained steady. His strong arm stayed limber. The word is for the bow is keshet again. So keshet is a rainbow. Keshet is the bow of an archer. Same word in Hebrew. Most of the times, the biblical uh, connection is to the rainbow because it's a frequency that feeds our earth. Here the same is when somebody is uh, steadily connected, he is really based properly, that's Vatashev Beitan Kashto. So here we're talking about the, the bow of the, uh, you know, bow and arrow. But that is a symbol for, you know, it remains steady, about steady connection to the God, to Godly uh, uh, light, and that will give us real, true, physical uh, connection, which means rest, sustenance, and all that is good. The Zohar explains, Zohar Parashat Noach, verse 267, in a Sulam commentary, Shekashtohi Malchut. When we are talking about the bow, the archer's bow, this is Malchut. Ela mishum shi Yosef nikra tzadik, but we are talking about Joseph. This is a blessing for Joseph in Parashat Vayichi, in the end of Genesis. Jacob's giving the blessing to Joseph, and it is using the word a bow, an archer. And it says that he's, because Joseph is the righteous, and Joseph the righteous, Yosef HaTzadik, is Yesod, So, 
the righteous person is Sfirat Yesod. Sfirat Yesod is a Sefirah that basically connects Malchut with the other nine Sefirot. This is the Sefirah that feeds uh, feeds the, our physical reality. Didn't we say that it's Binar does it? No contradiction. Vekeshet Malchut ki nichlal b'tzadik hibrit ze Yesod nitachet b'zeh ha-keshet. Yesod is connected to the, to the bow. Kelidei mituka shal malchut b'abina, yesod nekudat ha-maftecha. Okay, when we are talking about Sfirat Malchut, Sfirat Malchut is the, let's say, the final stage of the process, the process of devolution. If we start the process from an endless world full of endless bliss, and then comes the tzimtzum, the contraction, and so on. And little by little, there are more curtains and more curtains and more curtains. Still, we come to the most physical, materialistic reality that is so remote from bliss, happiness, and everlasting uh, fulfillment. Okay? How can that realm that is totally, totally dry, totally devoured of spirituality, how can that connect to Bina, to the source? How can it connect to Yesod, to the upper Sefirot, at all, to the tree of life? So it says that there were two contractions, two Tzimtzumim. The first Tzimtzum, the vessel pushed away the light of the Creator. Now the vessel could receive the light on its own. There was a little problem. The moment the vessel pushed away the light, the vessel is so far away from the endless light, from the upper sefirot, that it stays in dark, it's in darkness. And then there was a need to create a second simtsum. In that second simtsum, Malchut ascended to Bina. Remember Bina? is the Sfirah we're talking about, the source of everything, ascended to Bina, connected to Bina, received sweetness from Bina, which means the judgment has been diminished partially, and more mercy and love came instead. The result is called the sweetening of Malchut by Bina. Now, when we're talking about the, the, uh, all of that bliss coming from above, because of Malchut ascending and connecting to Bina, now we create a new vessel, a vessel that is a composition of Malchut and Bina. And what does it mean? It's called the desire to receive for the sake of sharing, which is the original frequency of every soul. So why aren't we so altruistic as we're supposed to be? Because we have a body and we have to overcome the body consciousness in order to have the biggest price, which is connecting, attaching ourselves to Bina. And that's why it's also called Nekudat HaMaftucha, the point of unlocking. Unlocking what? Unlocking the vessel. The vessel can connect to the eternal light when we, the vessel, we, the mundane reality, we create actions of love and kindness. When we overcome greed, negativity, hatred, anger, being right, and we turn it into listening, understanding, generosity, that's called sweetening Malchut with Bina. Where do we take the power of sharing and giving? From Bina. Okay? So that comes from Bina. That's come from the Sag, which means generosity. Now you understand why, uh, why people of the sign of Sagittarius, they're so kind, they're so, what they say about them, they don't have a mean bone. They have this kind of generosity of open heart to give, to share justice, being there for somebody else's uh, help, 
being like the knight on the on the white horse coming for the safe okay so so we understand that there is a, a special connection to divinity holiness sustenance and bliss in the month of sagittarius and therefore as we said because this is available in this month it's a month that we it's very easy for us to reconnect if you go back to listen to the study of the month of tishrei uh, libra this is very similar and because it is very similar the kabbalists explain to us that now after the month of scorpio is over with all its violence hardship stress and pressure this is like you know this is a stress test and we know according to what we went through during the last month we know what we did not really fix or correct during the holidays of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Simchat Torah. We know that we have now a second chance to connect to the same Sephira that is available on the high holidays, which is Bina again. Connecting to Bina means reconnection. Reconnection to God's light, reconnection to the sweetness of kindness, of mercy, of balance. That's the main issue of this month. It's grace and love, and our job is just to connect to it. Now, now we can go into, into more details. The moment we know the big picture of the month of Sagittarius. Again, a month that is full of a lot of bliss and grace. So, the month of Sagittarius is in the fall, the third, uh, the third uh, season in the year, the cycle that starts on the spring. Uh, and we see that it is the third season and it is the third month of the third season and that means a lot if we look at the letters in tetragrammaton each the four letters each one of them has the frequency of one of the four elements and one of the four seasons that are all interconnected okay and the fall is under the letter vav and the letter Vav means connection. It's like the line between the heaven and the earth. <coughs> it is the sphere of Zeranpin, which means again, this is the force of air, of the four elements, which is about intellect, balance, communication. And therefore, the, the uh, core frequency of all three months of the fall is air that's why all three of them are very sensitive to injustice to imbalance each of one of them will cannot stand imbalance libra will be the peacemaker libra will be the one who will talk to this side and to that side and finally make them have peace with each other because it can't stand when people are not are not connected when it's there's no balance and there's no justice he will do everything he can in a very sensitive diplomatic way to achieve peace all over again scorpio when scorpio does not see justice he will wage a war a revolution till justice is being achieved and restored Sagittarius is also going to wage a war but in a different way much kinder way more chivalry this is like the knight on the white horse uh, <coughs> so as we said all three are deeply by the core air that's why they're so sensitive to injustice 
And uh, that's why all three are very, very intelligent. Sagittarius has also, uh, he's the third, um, the third month of the fall. And so we see every month has the, the division into right, left, and center. Right is always the energy of water. Left is always the energy of fire. Center is always the energy of air, of the three elements. So Sagittarius is double air. One, because it's in the fall. Two, because it's the third month in the fall. So it's air of air, which means again, intellect. It's all happening in the intellect. They appreciate anything of beauty of the intellect, philosophy, poetry, uh, any kind of art and stuff like this. It's all about that air and again the sensitivity towards any injustice that breaks the symmetry. Sagittarius is known also in common astrology as a fire sign. Yes, it is a fire sign. In addition to double air. So just see the difference. You know, if the first fire sign in the year is Aries. If you anger somebody of Aries, he will explode on you. It's like throwing a match, a burning match, into a barrel of gasoline. Poof! Okay? Casualties all over the place. An explosion. Okay? You anger Sagittarius, you don't see that. You take the other one, uh, the other fire size, Leo. You anger Leo, you are going to pay for that dearly. The king is going to make sure that you are going to be put in place. Don't start with them. If you don't have the, uh, the, the power to fight back. Sagittarius, you make them upset, then somehow contain it, move on. If you continue to attack them, you can, you can corner them and they will be really stressed out because they're not, they're not murderers, they're not going to fight for their lives. And there's a very important message for us in Sagittarius. First of all, when we take double air in one fire, that's a big fire. Because any fire, whoever did a, you know, if you ever seen barbecue, you have to fan a lot of air over the charcoals because otherwise they won't really create a strong enough flame to barbecue the meat. Okay, to roast the meat. So you need, for the heat, you need air. You have two kinds of air and one fire, you have a lot of wind, you have a lot of blow. And that means that the fire of Sagittarius is very, very, very creative. They're very fast, they think fast, because of the combination of fire and air, double air, that's a lot of creativity, a lot of action. Rabbi Ezekluria is saying, you look at the fireplace, and you look at the fire, it is never boring. It always reinventing itself. Never two shapes following each other. The same thing with all fire signs, especially with Sagittarius. They're very creative, very artistic. They're moving fast, they're thinking fast. It's all on the go. They can't stand slow. They can't stand... Uh, uh, lethargic kind of people and situations they need to be on the move they need to create to generate they generate a lot of light and as we said it's all that energy is coming from the sag the samach gimel of the sagittarius it's all coming down through them so they're full of bliss and energy and ideas and reinvention and they fold they get up and very very intense energy very very fast energy almost no procrastination because they're always on the go so much energy okay but here 
as we said before, when you anger the Aries, you simply uh, trespass into his domain. That will be a war. Same thing with Leo. Sagittarius, somehow they can't say no. Why is that? Why is that? And let's go to the description in the uh, Sefer Yetzirah for Jupiter, the ruling planet. Tzedek. Tzedek means in Hebrew justice. Exactly. What Sagittarius is about justice, about honesty. Chivalry. Himlichot Gimel v'kashar loketer. So God gave the power to the letter Gimel, created with that planet Jupiter. Okay, and that means that the letter Gimel got the power of peace from Chesed, giving kindness. Sigel ba'al Chesed. It has the qualities of Chesed. Honesty, integrity, justice, humility, good deeds, masim tovim, shem tov, a good name, balding shel chesed, vanchei shem, people of honesty and integrity. And that's a branding for, for Sagittarius. Neeman, loyal. Vechokmat ha-Torah in the wisdom. They love wisdom. And especially the wisdom of the Torah, which is the, the highest level of wisdom. שנאמר ותורת חסד על לשונה והסתירות בדין בני חלוף and they like challenges and they like to deal making deals money negotiations and success in every business and making profit and richness כי לא הכסף ותקווה טובה because the planet Jupiter is representing money success in every kind of business and profits and richness he has the money he has good hope of giving loving happiness marriage but a marriage life of bliss and success uh, and it shows about successful children he has the peace tranquility and security from all fear from all fear because they're so full of grace they, they help they help loyalty nice houses but team name, nice built, nice, uh, you know, nice communities, nice houses. Also, they love the worship of God, the grace. You know, if you have a synagogue or any house of worship that the people that are running the place are Sagittarius, it's going to be, everything is going to be with grace and greatness and beauty. And with music, it's the, the, you come into a very, like, positive, rich atmosphere. Not every synagogue or worship place is like this. A lot of them are preaching for, you know, just having uh, the minimum, the, the bare necessities just to operate the place. Where we're not supposed to enjoy. No, they love to enjoy. And they enjoy, and even the worship of God should be with grace. It should be a beautiful, great, satisfying show. Where the, the cantor must be a singer. He has to have a nice voice. This this is Sagittarius. Notel letzad the Chesed always leans to the Chesed. Upotech b'zchut uvirkat haaretz v'rov tuah v'shalom ayir. So it's all a symbol for peace, harmony, tranquility. Healing also and, and giving freedom to the prisoners and all the ones who are being kept in hostage against their will. This is the time to release them. This is the time for them to leave uh, their uh, prison. 
by the forces of chesed and good good fortune by kings of truth and judges of justice. The kind of stone for that is uh, quartz that looks like a sapphire and it's about achieving whatever they want. And these are the people in every synagogue that are the honorable, that you see, they're full of grace and success and the achievement and the cantors, the people, professional singers of the prayers, and all and more of it. Rising of prices, which means it's all about bliss. Okay, so what do we learn from that? We learn there's a lot of grace, and it's coming from the letter Gimel. Gimel, the letter for, uh, as you seen before, Gimel is. Okay, we, it's time to move on. Okay, so you see it over here. The letter Gimel for Jupiter. Gimel means in Hebrew to reward, to share, to uh, to award. Also, simply to share bliss. That's Gimel. If you see the way the letter Gimel is structured, it's made from a vav, and then there's a yud at the bottom. The Vav, as we said, is a conduit that connects up and, and below, and the Yud is that light that is being given away. So, when you are full of bliss and you have a great nature because they are nice people. So what is about the Samech? And the Samech for Sagittarius is also a letter, Samech means support. Supporting whom? Somech noflim, supporting the ones who fell. When did they fall? We said that in the month of Scorpio, that's, that's a time to fall. This is a time for a blow. This is the time for the economy to get the blow. This is the time for people to get the blow of awakening. So when the ones who fell, that's a letter nun, the following letter in the Hebrew alphabet is Samech. Somech noflim, supporting the ones who fell. And the Gimel is Gomel Dalim, helping, awarding the ones who are poor. Dalet is a letter for Scorpio, poor. So that's exactly the opposite. Scorpio and Sagittarius are such different worlds. This is full of bliss. It's like a child that was born in a household that everybody's hungry all the time, that's Scorpio, hunger, and a child that is born in a household of rich people that always, there is bliss, there's always a lot of food in the fridge, there's always a lot of food on the table, and all kinds of food, and it's all plenty. Shefa. So that's the consciousness. So that's why, you know, you cannot give what you don't have. That's why people, the sign of Sagittarius, they are people of bliss, of giving and sharing with kindness. You have, you have that, so you give it away. What's the problem with that? There's always a problem to fix, otherwise we're not here to be just rest on the laurels, on our laurels. And the answer is, and by the way, the tribe that is connected to, by the order of birth, this is Naftali. Naftali Ayala Shlucha. This is the fast deer, or gazelle, no, deer which means speed. Why? A lot of energy. You are, you know, you're, you're fast. You're not standing, you're not walking. You're running. You're on the run, not because of a lack, but because of the excess of energy. One little problem. When everything is so great, when everything is so beautiful and balanced, and somebody comes to harass you, you don't understand where they're coming from. It's like, no, they can't. Yes, they can. They don't speak your language. If they mean harm, they are evil because they are in deep pain of lack and they attack you, 
and you live a life full of bliss, you don't understand where they're coming from. You think they, they just, if you give them just money and comfort, or whatever, they'll be okay. They won't be okay. Their lack is coming from within. You cannot fill their lack unless they fill it up themselves. You can't just be nice to these kind of people that attack you. And Sagittarius have many, many times that tikkun to learn how to say no, to learn how to keep put the boundary, to learn how to rise, although you're comfortable, and to fight for your freedom and for whatever is important for you. You just named Hanukkah. What's the holiday of Hanukkah? The holiday of Hanukkah is, you know, there were, that's the second temple in the history of the Jewish people. Uh, the temple was after the uh, destruction of the first temple. Uh, many Jews came back from the exile to Jerusalem with the permission of the Persians, who were the ruling empire, and they rebuilt with that permit the temple in Jerusalem. So the Jewish community in the Holy Land is building itself step by step and is getting pretty successful after a while. Okay, and everything, and that's under the rule of the Persians. And then when the rule of the Hellenistic Empire came in with Alexander the Great, he spared Jerusalem, he gave the, the Jews their rights of autonomy and so on like they had previously and now the world is even more united more commerce more industry more uh, creativity and of course a jewish community like this is thriving it's thriving and then after a while everything is changing and the king the hellenistic king of uh the Hellenic king that is sit, sitting in Damascus, he decides to turn all the Jews to become Hellenistic. And he forbids them to keep Shabbat, to perform circumcision, to study Torah, to have their worship in the temple. He turns the temple in Jerusalem into a place of worshiping Zeus. You know, he does it little by little, step by step, not all at once. And the Jews saying every time, you know, you know, we are rich, we're comfortable, there's peace, there's global peace. Why making, why fighting? So they start to uh, simply hide away, go outside, uh, like the, the Maccabees, the family of the Hashmonaim. They were in Jerusalem, but they ran away to Modin, which is a day walk from Jerusalem just not to be next to that, to that persecution. And then the persecution comes to Modin after them. And they rebel. Which means they realize it's either you fight for your values or you don't, life does not worth it to live with a lie. So again, the chivalry of going with, and here comes the bow, fighting for your justice and fighting a just war for equality, a war for enlightenment, a war for uh, free freedom. That was the first guerrilla war for freedom on ideological base in the history, 22 uh, centuries ago, and they win. And when do they celebrate the holiday of Hanukkah in the month of Kislev? By the way, the Hellenists, they put the statue of Zeus in the temple in Jerusalem in the same day, the 25th day of Kislev. And the, the temple was uh, freed and the menorah was lit, the holiday of lights, on the same day, the 25th of Kislev. Okay, so let's go a little bit, because we are out of time, to understand what's the story. So uh, Rabbi uh, 
לבני שכר, רבי צבי אלי מלך עובדינוב, and he says that the, uh, he adds to us, צירוף השם הנכבד המאיר בחודש כסלו הוא וו יוד ה' ה'. You see the, the permutation of the tetragrammaton for this month, there are 12 of them, one for each month, is וו יוד ה' ה'. If you want to know a little bit of Kabbalah, you understand that the וו and the יוד are male letters, ה' is a female letter. which means the, the dominant energy this month is a male energy. What is it in male? Initiative. Uh, creativity. Moving forward. Taking the lead. So that's, that's the Vav and the Yud. So that's also the energy of Sagittarius. You can see it. Uh, but we have one more thing. The name of the month in Hebrew is Kislev. What's the meaning of that, of, that, uh, of that word? So, the Bnei, the Bnei Sachar is saying as follows. Kislev emiluo kaze kaf samech lamed vav. If you take the name of the month, Kislev, okay, if you take the name of the month, Kislev in Hebrew, you have, where do we have it? beginning Kislev okay the month of Kislev when we take that name Kislev in Hebrew Kaf Samech Lamed Vav when you write Kaf Sam in the names of the letters Kaf is Kaf Pei okay Samech Samech Mem Kaf when you write we spell out the name Kislev you get the number that is equal to Av HaRachamim the Father of Mercy. One of the names we pray to God with on the High Holidays, asking for mercy and forgiveness. Which means, it, whatever we did not achieve during the High Holidays, we have a second chance that's second chance to reconnect to the bliss of the Creator and His love and achieve and achieve that bliss which is um, the Father of Mercy. Also, we have another thing. We know that when it says in Genesis and God said, let there be light and there was light. There was not a physical light. Rashi says Uh, the Midrash is saying, that was the spiritual light. And the spiritual light was shining for 36 hours till the sin of Adam. And then that light was hidden. And we stayed only with physical light. Why is that important? Because that light, the hidden light, the hidden light is called Lamed Vav, it's 36 hours. In the, holiday, in the holiday of Hanukkah, we light 36 candles. Yes, we light 44, but these eight candles are the Shamash. They do not belong directly to the light of Hanukkah. So we have 36 candles. What's the, that's Kislev, that's a Lev. What about the kiss? Kiss means a pocket. A pocket which means a hiding. To lechasot, to cover. So in this month, when we create, con when we connect to that power of Kislev, of Sagittarius, and we create that energy of bliss and giving and sharing and connecting to the core value of the human soul, of real spirituality on the positive aspect of love and mercy, not of judgment. Loving a God of love, not a God of judgment. Because the Creator is all light. He is, he is only about giving. This is a very, very powerful time to connect to that consciousness that the power that is running the show is all mercy and love. On the eight days of Hanukkah, 
four, 36 lights. That light that is covered, kiss lev. The covered light of 36 hours of hidden light is being revealed. And we bring it from above to below. We pull it in by lighting candles every night for eight days. So this is why it's also called a month that is full of light, the month of lights, the hidden lights. So when we want to connect to this month, in the Anna Bekoach prayer, the second line, Kabel Rinat Amecha Sakveinu Tahareinu Noa, is ruling this month. This is the line that controls Jupiter. The initials are Kufresh Ein Sintet Nun, which is the only sequence that has a meaning in Hebrew. It means to tear away Satan. How do we tear away Satan? With grace, with love, with justice, with honor, with keeping the covenant. When we have integrity and honesty and the will, the desire to connect to that place of enlightenment. We see it here all again. And from the point of view of the Gimel, as we said, of, Je of, of Jupiter, it is happiness and bliss, speed, energetic rate and creativity, spiritual growth, open to learn, miracles, good fortune outside the box. It's all about it. As remember, the Tikkun is no pain, no gain. If you are built, if you are stuck in your comfort zone, and you know, why should I fight for my freedom? I have a golf game, and then a tennis game, and then I have a gala. You know, going to fight for my freedom against the barbarians? No, it's like it's over already. They don't want me anymore, anymore. This is barbaric. No. The Maccabees, they had to get up and fight. After centuries, Jews did not hold a weapon. They went, they had to fight. And they were Kohanim, priests. They never had weapons, Kohanim. They held weapons. They get the whole people to fight for their freedom. The freedom to believe, the freedom to be free, the freedom to think, to learn, to know, the freedom to connect to spiritual, real, true light. And that's a message of this month. So, just to mention whatever going is going around, we know humanity right now in the last few years, and especially starting the, this year, the last Rosh Hashanah, humanity is moving through very abrupt, bumpy journey. Very painful, very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable because we are in a, in a time in which there's a light that is pushing. Remember we said about the light that is pushing for redemption. The light is pushing so strong, so a lot of the lies that we were fed with for so many centuries comes to the surface. A lot of the lies that belong to the civilization that was created after World War II, it's like, and the pressure in this coming month will be even stronger. And it will be so strong that I'll, you know, if you, if you hold on to the lies because you want to hold on to the old world, the old world is dead, is dying. Many aspects of it are finished, gone. What was will never, will, will never be. So flexibility, a lot of generosity, a lot of love on the one hand. Same thing, learning how to put the boundaries for any cruelty, uh, illegal behavior, I'm talking about cosmically, through any lack of integrity, lies, brainwashing for any kind of cruelty and, and hatred, doesn't have any place anymore. The more you hold on to the old lies, the more painful it will become. The more you get out of the box and you really take upon yourself the commitment, the covenant, with the truth and the values of the of the Bible, of the Tanakh and the Zohar, it will be much easier 
much faster the uh, transition into a world in which we will be smarter, more enlightened, more happy, more connected to ourselves, and more successful. And that's coming in the coming months. Thank you, everybody, and wishing everyone a great month of Sagittarius.